What's up everyone, I'm Daniel from Michigan Aquatics and today we're on a little bit of a sour note which is why I'm going to be less enthusiastic today. You know how my Oscar, how I said Buddy was acting weird? Well it turns out Buddy had a disease called Velvet. Yes, yes, Marine Velvet. Now before everyone says, oh he's Killed off two of his tanks. He's a bad fish keeper. Everyone unsubscribe from him. It's not the case. Though I have accepted that it is my fault. It's a controlled ecosystem because it's in the aquarium. And I killed it by adding what? <coughs> Daniel, Daniel, was it the convicts? The convicts did it, didn't they? Yep, you put them in there, got all your other fish sick. Nope, in fact, quite the opposite. Believe it or not, the first one that got sick is the problem. Me adding the Oscar buddy into the tank, which is what I wanted to do originally. It was going to be Peacock Bass, Jaguar Cichlid, and Tiger Oscar. Those were my three fish I wanted in there before I got the convicts. But Daniel, how? How is the Oscar the problem and not the convicts? You know, you just added them in and all your fish got sick. That's got to be the reason because your fish got sick after the convicts, huh? Not at all. The thing that contributed to it was my Oscar was so beat up from the Jaguar that she was so susceptible to anything. And I guess, yes, the convicts had a little bit of it, a little bit of a part of it. They messed up the cycle of the aquarium just a little bit because they're small fish. Made feeding go up, making the Oscar eat more. And in the course of me getting them, like I always do, I do three water changes. Well, not three water changes. Usually one water change and a couple rearrangements of the tank. And all that put together, and my Oscar's wounds not healing quick enough, gave the marine velvet a weak area on that fish to strike. Now, Daniel, what is marine velvet? It is a parasitic algae that is always in your tank, constantly cycling. Your fish will always get it. You'll always see signs of velvet. But just like we can push off the flu on our own, they can too. But if the fish has a bunch of wounds and its immune system is low because of stress or something, the velvet can really get to the fish. It's the same thing with white spot disease or ick. That's basically what marine velvet is now, and that's also how they catch it. Curing it is easy, but it isn't easy. Curing velvet is the same thing as curing ick. Throughout my eight years, I have cured many fish of ick, but all the fish I've ever had that got velvet have died. Like, had an outbreak of velvet. Now what does velvet look like? The first signs of velvet will be the fish going like this with their bodies. They'll be swimming and then they'll stop and they'll go and keep swimming, you know. They'll basically go like this. And they'll have like a little tick in their body. As well as they'll start constantly scratching up against rocks. I mean fish do that already. You know, just like humans get itches and if our hands are full... We go like this on a wall or something to scratch ourselves to get rid of that itch. Fish do that naturally too. You know, because they get sick and they can fight it off and, you know. But um, usually it looks like it starts out as a little patch usually, a little patch. And when you look at the fish head on, on a slight angle, you can see a patch of whitish to brownish to greenish. <laughs> velvet, basically. It looks like velvet. But the first signs that your fish have it will be their pectoral fins. It's usually their pectorals first. I don't know why. Maybe that's the weakest fin. But it gets under the slime coat and attacks the cells of the fins and eats them. Which if you, if you know that your fish isn't being attacked by any of the other fish in Frank's. See I got the light off right now. We'll get to treatment in a second. I'm going to turn it on really quickly. Alright. This is only the second day. Frank is acting completely normal. Except, you see his fin there? See that little bit of a film on it? That's either one, it's growing back, or two, it's velvet. That little thing on his cheek is my fault, but everything else 
is probably velvet, including on his dorsal spines and stuff, you get the idea. This fish has velvet. Convicts, they're not showing any signs. Oh, no, this the female has a little bit of a sign of velvet. You can also see her colors darkened up. That's because her eggs were killed when I get, did my first dose in the aquarium. Here's the male right here. He just did a tick. He don't really got it yet, but the female got it pretty good. Frank got it pretty good. But you're wondering, Daniel, where's the Oscar? Did it die already? No, I put her down here, and you can see this is basically what they do when they have a really strong case of velvet. They sit at the bottom, and they don't move, all right? Just like this. They sit there, and they don't move. That's what they look like. They'll stop eating completely, and they'll just, within the period of five days, they'll die if, without treatment. Bottom line, I know for a fact my fish have velvet, and, I, and I'm accepting that, and I'm accepting it's my fault they have velvet. Am I mad about it? Heck yes, I'm angry. I spent almost 30 bucks on this fish. I spent 9 bucks on the Jaguar. And I spent a total of, of like 5 bucks on the two convicts. And I spent almost 20 bucks on this Oscar. It's pretty angering. All the money I've actually put into this tank. Within the 2 month period. This cichlid tank has actually been running. Now, treatment's very simple. This is what I'm doing for it. I've had this stuff for a while. It almost got completely rid of, believe it or not. Oh, I forgot what it's called. It's a white spot disease, but it's in little blotches. It almost got rid of that on my bed on my pleco. It's called Nox Ick. This stuff, I mean, it's cheap. It's not the best, but it's the best I have. Just one drop. It will stop, and it's also for velvet. It says it on the back. Um, it's a drop per gallon, and it has blue dye in it, so you know it's spread all the way across the aquarium. I put 55 drops of it. Daniel, why don't you overdose it? What happens if you overdose it? Well, if you overdose it, it can kill your fish. It has to be dead on. I mean, if you're one drop overdose, you're going to be fine. But if you're more like... Five to ten drops, five and over drops, overdose. You got an issue. Because then instead of attacking the um, ick cells or the velvet cells, instead it will attack your fish's cells. Got to be very careful with it. Definitely be very careful with it. No, because my dad's not completely sure. That tank does have velvet, though I am completely sure it has velvet. He said, only treat it for two days. I said, all right, but if, if I stop and this keeps going, then I'm treating it the full treatment, which is um, a one-week treatment. I usually do it for two weeks if it's not done in one week. And if the fish die, this time I'm going to have another plan. Daniel, you're going to get new fish already? You have to do a bunch of stuff to that tank so the other fish don't catch it again. Correct, and I will, but it won't be too hard. It'll take about, I don't know, three, four hours. Do a complete clean out, filter, clean out everything. I'll do everything. Then, like I said in previous videos, then the weekend after this weekend, I should be going to a pet store in Lansing, Michigan. A.K.A. one of the biggest in the state of Michigan. I think it is the biggest state in Michigan. I meant the, uh, the biggest state in Michigan. The biggest store in Michigan, but it's one of the biggest in the United States of America, is what I meant to say. Therefore, they should have everything. Now, I have some options here yet again. I can either, one, do peacock bass and non-aggressive cichlids. Two, do mostly aggressive cichlids, jaguar cichlids and stuff. Three, do a bunch of community South American fish. Four, um, I could do African cichlids, Malawi or Tanganyikan. Or five, the one I really want to do. I want to have a dovi cichlid. What is a dovi cichlid, Daniel, if you do not know? 
The Dovi is like the most aggressive cichlid, other than the Red Devil. Now, the Red Devil and the Dovi cross very closely on my list of fish I want. The Red Devil is a very persistent attacker. It never stops. Once a fish is pushed up into a corner, if it was a jaguar, the jag leaves it there. But, if it's a Red Devil, the Red Devil keeps attacking it until it's dead. No matter how long it takes or if it dies trying. Coming in. The Dovi isn't as fast of an attacker. It's more of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gate almost fell there. That would have scared everything in here. It is a one bite, one kill fish. Being the fish is so incredibly strong, it doesn't have to fight fast. If it goes up against the green terror, the green terror won't do anything to it because its scales are almost like armor plating and extremely strong. And there's no way the green terror's mouth will get over the size and pull out the mouth of the dovi because the mouth is so strong and giant. So all the Jack, I mean not Jack Dempsey, all the Green Terror would have to do is let go and turn to his side and start doing that wiggly thing like this. And the Dovi would just go in for the mouth and instead of biting the mouth, it'd bite the head because the head is the only thing that Dovi's mouth can grab onto. It can't grab onto the little mouth of the um, Terror. Not to mention the teeth on this thing, as a full-grown adult get about this long and about this thick. That's huge. What would I put with a dovi? Nothing! Probably nothing! It'd fillet every fish in the tank! The only things I could think to put with it is a gangster pleco and a red-tailed catfish. Those are the only two I could think to put with it. A red devil if I'm lucky. They both fight each other and both kill each other. Slowly, they probably get velvet, even though velvet should be out of the tank. But Daniel, where are you ever going to find a Dovi cichlid? Like I said, I'm going to this pet store in Lansing. It's the it's the, the biggest in Michigan, and it is one of the biggest in the U.S. Trust me, this place has got to have Dovi's. Anyway, that's my plan if these guys do end up dying and... I'll probably only stick with one fish this time, so if you guys want to see me continue filming that my fish more often, give this video a like, even if they're sick, even if I only get one dovi. Or comment down below if these fish do end up succumbing. <coughs> what fish should I buy for it? I'm at a loss of words for what I should get. What do you think I should get? Leave me a comment down below, like this video. Tell me, what is your favorite cichlid, and if I should buy it for that tank or not. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope, you, I, hope I taught you something on Velvet, and I hope I showed you what's going on and why filming is going to be a little bit slower than it usually is. My video on peacock bass versus Oscar versus Jaguar cichlid versus Oscar versus peacock bass or whatever just made it to 51 views within two weeks. I think that is good, but if you guys see this video, if you end up coming across it, make sure you check out my channel. I have an awesome 55-gallon cichlid tank for South American cichlids, and if you hit that notification bell and that subscribe button, you will see if they die what I get is a new fish and let's not forget you'll make me happy my goal is to help people learn I know more about fish than the average 14 year old boy because I'm not just the average 14 year old boy I love what I do and I don't care what happens to any of my fish never mind yes I do I really hope they don't die Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, turn on notifications so you can see future uploads like when these guys die, when I get a new fish, if they die, and what type of fish it ends up being. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. Pray for the fish, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.